Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Maybe silence all cell phone and electronic devices, please. My name is Lidora Nicholas. I'll be the moderator for this morning's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of the divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa brand was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, President, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the word of son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are laws many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such name as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limit, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We are drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of son a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given until salvation. 
and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in his vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operations of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in a New York state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. We have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Anthony Oliver, we have a song selection by Dr. Lisa Zizi. Our scripture lesson is Acts the 17th chapter, will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams. Our scripture readers are Dr. Lisa Zizi and Dr. Sherry Williams. Uh, good, good morning, class. Uh, that's all about our hearts and minds. Uh, dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, we uh, thank you again for giving us this opportunity that we might partake more of your grace and mercy because that's the only thing that's saving any soul is Yahshua's grace and mercy which is the only who only has saved any soul and, and ever will is Yahshua's grace and mercy uh, let us help us to appreciate your grace and mercy Help us to love you. Make us love you. We need to love you to inherit eternal life. Yep. All these blessings we ask, Yahshua, and your only begotten son, Yahshua Messiah. Let us say hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. It's a joy to be home, at home in Yashua. Yes. It's a joy to be home now. Oh, how joy my heart can hear. Yashua, in your love, you wash away my fear. You freed me from my prison, just call me by name. Death and his dominion, I will never be the same. Cause I don't want to go back again. The sun with its bold beam sweeps glory across the sky. Brings life to the barren tree, such a miraculous sight. Now she walk, I joyfully thank you for the promise you've given me. I know your word is true, I saw the sun resurrecting trees, and you resurrecting me. This is not slipping out of my mind, Yeshua is eternal life. This is not slipping out of my mind, Yeshua is eternal life. When I see you just how you lay the bread to bring your lost sheep home, to clean the field from this wayward world, my grateful tears flow. From the cauldron of confusion, you heard the mournful cry. Released them all one by one and gave them your life. You gave the gift your life. Now she what we want to stay home. Your heart warms my soul. We rest in peace as you nourish our needs in the mansions you foretold. We're all in one place. We're all in one accord. In the house of Yahweh, and you've secured the door. Yes, you are, you've locked the door. This is not slipping out of my mind. Yes, you are, he's eternal life. This is not slipping out of my mind. Yes, you are, he's eternal life. This is not slipping out of my mind. Yes, you are, he's eternal life. This is not slipping out of my mind. Yes, you are, he's eternal life. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, Acts, the 17th chapter. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonia, Thessalonia, where was a synagogue of the Jews, and Saul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that the Messiah must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Yahshua said he whom I preach unto you is the Messiah. And some of them believed and consorted with Saul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude and of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews which believed not moved with envy took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Yahshua. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the others, they let them go. 
And the brethren immediately sent away Saul and Silas by night to Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of Yahweh was preached of Saul in Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Saul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timothy abode there still. And they that conducted Saul brought him unto Athens and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timothy for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now, while Saul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what will this babbler say? Others said, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange deities, because he preached, preached unto them Yahshua and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, may we know what this new doctrine is whereof thou speakest? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Saul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are devoted to the worship of idols. For as I passed by and beheld your objects of worship, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, Yahweh, who made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things and hath made of one man all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek him, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device can be like the most high. And the times of this ignorance Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained whereof he had given him proof, given proof unto all men that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Saul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysus and the Arab Pagai, and a woman named Demarius, and others with them. That was Acts, the 17th chapter. Good morning, everybody. Um, today, we're going to have a three-speaker format. And uh, for our first speaker, I would like to ask uh, Janine uh, Whitfield. Um, Janine, are you from Detroit or Southfield? I, I, I'm sorry. It's OK. I'm from Detroit. OK. Well, uh, thank you and um, good morning to everybody. I'm happy to be uh, in attendance at, at class. Give me just a second, I'm gonna put my headphones on. I think that works better. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Joel, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, thank you. So once again, uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity. Uh, I'm always happy to have a testimony of the things that we have learned since coming into this, uh, this teaching and um, understanding and learning and appreciating that we have been called out of the world and that we have been given uh, treasures in these earthen vessels. And the things that we have come to learn in this school are things that are available and possible for others to learn, but yet there's only a remnant. And that is really something to think about as we uh, continue on the move. I want to stress that that's important because we are moving. Everything is moving and everything is moving at uh, a, a quicker or a faster pace. I recently learned and did a little bit of research and I can't remember all of the information now, but that if the, uh, the earth rotating on its axis continues to rotate as fast as it has been recently, that they're going to have to add another second to the clock, the master clock somewhere in England. Um, and like I said, it's been a while since I did that research, but I just find that fascinating. And they were talking about the glaciers in Alaska. So what I'm saying is, is that we, and I'll start with Romans 1, 19 and 20, we're told, and we have been shown that you take the natural things to understand the spiritual things. And that this particular dispensation that we are in right now is a spiritual dispensation. So then we have to take those things that we're seeing and learning in the natural and they must be translated into the spirit so that we can get the spiritual reality of it. And that's what we're after. We're after the spiritual reality of what it is that we have come into. And um, understanding the principles and the natural examples that uh, have been given in the, in the scriptures are extremely important because they are our guideposts. So if we could start with Romans 1, 19, 20. Okay, Romans, first chapter, verse 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. So pause for a sec. So first of all, we know, or we're learning that there are some things that we can know of Yahweh. So we want to be very clear because we're not interpreting these scriptures. No one's interested in our opinion mm -hmm. and our thoughts about it. We only want to hear what thus saith Yahweh. And this is so important. So he is clearly saying that there is something that we can know about our creator. And the way in which we can know it is based on the things that he has made. And so when we come into this teaching for the first time, we are given the principles or the tenets of this teaching, the way in which we can use this roadmap to truly learn about our creator and to learn how it is that we can know something about him as he really is and actually exists. Mm -hmm. And so what we were told, and I should do this, and I uh, want to just pause for just a second and ask uh, Dr. Turner, are there any new people on the uh, Zoom call today? Not brand new. Um, 
So you can get into whatever you like. Okay, thanks. I just like to do that because it's important, you know, um, we have a class on Thursday and lately we've been having visitors all the time. Mm. And uh, we have um, also quite a few visitors now from around the world. And it's just so phenomenal and mm -hmm. fascinating how Yahweh handpicks, <laughs> handpicks his sons and we were handpicked from the foundation of the world. All right, so let's go on back. Now, so we are understanding about those things that can be learned of Yahweh and how he laid out for us the roadmap to understand. So the first thing that understanding what the principles of this gospel is and how we begin to understand it is we were told that the basic tenets of this gospel is number one, the unity of the spirit and understanding the name of our creator and the importance and the relevance of using the true names because it wasn't just a name, it had power, number one, and then it is the, um, it is the blueprint, for example, of a man. When you just look at something very simple as the letter Y in the name of Yahweh, and how everything, absolutely everything that's ever been created has those branches, those three part branches. Uh, not only is it in the man's body, in the trees, in everything, in fruit, in food, you will always see that, uh, what you would call that identification. And it, the same holds true if man is made in the image and likeness of his creator when he does something and he puts his name or he puts his identification on it, not wanting to give credit to someone else, but giving credit to that for who actually did the creating. So we can see also how we are made in the image of our creator and we're little miniature versions of him and what it is that he's done. So what we, what we learn again is the true names and the unity of the spirit so that's one very important tenet of this gospel. The next important tenet of this gospel is the institution and fulfillment uh, by Yahshua the Messiah, the institution and fulfillment of cardinal ordinances. And we cannot leave out the spiritual fulfillment. So Yahweh uh, Elohim as Joshua set it up, Yahweh Elohim as Yahshua shut it up, so to speak, or fulfilled it. So he set it up in the first five books of the Bible known as the law. And then we have the next 34 books, which are the testimony, which everything that's written in the testimony is drawn from what was written in the law. And so then we have the fulfillment, the mission and fulfillment, the birth, the birth, the life, um, the ascension, the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua, the Messiah, the ascension, and then the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which is where our lesson, uh, spiritual or scripture lesson was taking us, um, mm -hmm. which is a part of that spiritual fulfillment, which is what Paul was trying to um, convey over there in, in Acts, the 17th chapter. So now to just go back, we've got the tenets of the gospel being the true names, the unity of the spirit, pointing out how that works, the mission, institution, fulfillment of the cardinal ordinances um, by Yahshua the Messiah and the spiritual um, fulfillment of that. And then the third tenet is the introduction of the, an understanding of the tabernacle pattern, which is our guidepost for understanding this teaching. So, and there's obviously everything for the most part that we discuss or that we talk about that, um, that is, is to, you know, to, to convey this gospel is going to be in one of those three things for the most part. So I would like to just focus for a minute on um, the, the unity of the spirit and understanding going back to uh, Romans where we talk about how we can know what we can know of our father 
and the fact that it is based upon the unity of the spirit. Let's get John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Pause. So now if someone can go over to get Genesis 1 and 1 for me, please. I got that. I'm sorry, what Genesis, Genesis, Genesis 1 and 1? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Okay, Genesis 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Pause. So we got two beginnings here. See now, <laughs> without this vision and without this, this the, the fact that Yahweh gave uh, the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Finley, this divine vision and revelation to help us understand what appears to be contradictions in the Bible. Because mm -hmm. in Genesis 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then in John 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. So what we have to do is we have to find a way to reconcile what, are, what is going on here. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's funny how we, <laughs> the, 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 the most beautiful and powerful thing or one of the most beautiful and powerful things to learn about our creator is that it's hidden in his, he's hidden in a mystery. And um, it's interesting that he would, you know, it's almost like you're, you're a detective <laughs> and, and you have to unravel this mystery in order to understand um, how things really are. And that is, a real good, I guess, indication of why it is that the world would be in such torment or in such disarray because they don't know how to unravel the mystery. And because of man's vanity and because men think that they are the master of their own destiny, when the truth has been presented in the world, they reject it because it doesn't come the way they think it should come. Mm. It's, it's not given to those that are of high esteem in the world. And that's the beauty of our creator. So he works with the common man. And even Yahshua the Messiah, when he came on the face of the earth, he came low, he came humble. You know, and that's, I mean, listen, the thing that keep in mind is that uh, I'm going to have to deviate for just a second and go over to Romans, the ninth chapter. You have to go as the Spirit is leading. And let us get straight. Let us get straight who uh, this one that we called in our previous affiliations, who we called God. Remember, we're coming into this school to learn about Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Now, I'm looking for specifically the potter and the clay. Mm -hmm. okay. Because we got to get this straight. We got to get it straight that we might think that if we all uptight and out of sight and that we're the master of our own destiny and we running things and so forth and so on. And, mm -hmm. and, and we're going to get straight how that really is. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. I believe it's nine and... I don't About know. 19. I was, okay. Make sure train, yeah. a train of thought, please. Yeah. Um, 18. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom yes. he will he hardeneth. Okay, pause. I think we should go up maybe a couple more. A little bit, yeah. Um, uh, it's Sorry, a lot I'm not looking at my Bible. I should probably get it and open it. 15, maybe. Yes. Well, well <laughs> I know. Maybe it's probably the whole we need to start at nine and one. You know what? Let's just do that. Yes. We'll drop down. Yes. Nine just... and one. Mm -hmm. um, Romans nine and one. I say the truth in Yahshua, the Messiah. I lie not. Yes. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Yahshua, from the Messiah, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. 
who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh. Okay, and the pause. Let's, let's pause for a sec. Let's go ahead and drop down to the 11th verse. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of Yahweh according to election might stand. Okay, that's important. The children, we're talking about Esau and Jacob, having not even been born, okay? And you hear what, um, what the reader just read, neither having done any good or evil, but that the purpose of Elohim might stand according to election. Go ahead, read. Not of works, but of him that calleth. Mm -hmm. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Pause. Now that's deep. We're talking about your creator of heaven and earth. Is there some hate going on here? What's happening? Mm -hmm. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Go ahead, read. What shall we say then? Yes. Is there unrighteousness with Yahweh? <laughs> Listen, you can even begin to call it unrighteousness. You don't even know what righteousness is. What we're learning, what we are come to learn in this school is that Yahweh has a purpose, not us. So to show this, this is a demonstration of this because going back to the unity of the spirit for just a minute, you have to, we have to understand that Yahweh is pure spirit, okay? It is, as it said in Acts, it is in within Yahweh that we have lived, move, and have our being. And he is a consuming fire. The creation came out in that fire, if you will the principle of a fire. I'm not talking about the natural fire that burns up. So you're just starting knowing and understanding that Yahweh has two mysteries in operation now. He's got that mystery of righteousness and the mystery of iniquity. And that concept and idea from the very beginning comes plays out all the way down through the natural creation. Go ahead and read. Yahweh forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Yes. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Can we read that out of the King James Version? Because I think that uh, you do have to do that comparison because sometimes they, A.B. Trainer, exchange words that suited him. Yes, it is. This is King James. Okay. Uh, maybe read it in the uh, Holy Name Bible. Let's just get the comparisons and see what saying it's saying. Because I think I'm, I'm reading in the holy name and it says, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Is that what you just read? Yes, ma'am. Okay, keep going. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of Yahweh that showeth mercy. See, the point is, is we're at his mercy. That's my point. Get in line, understand what's going on, not what you want it to be. So it's Yahweh will have mercy on who he will have mercy and who he hardened, he'll harden as we're going to read further down. Go ahead and read. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. Pause. Now he raised up Pharaoh and he raised up Pharaoh on that unrighteous side. See, he had to make Pharaoh resist him. He had to make him do that. What I'm trying to um, convey here is that Yahweh, our Elohim, he doeth all these things because it is in him that we live and we move and have our being. So you've got this one, this great big stage, this orchestration that is going on that is going on in him, all of it. The mm -hmm. good, the bad, the ugly. That's why you can't, male oh man, but who are you to uh, uh, reply against Yahweh? Oh, you have no idea who you even dealing with. 
you don't have no idea at the power that 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 you whose hands you have fallen into so we walk around here groping in darkness and ignorance thinking that we know what's happening and we can see based on what is happening in the world and the, the Yahweh allowing that satanic spirit, his dog on the leash, to do his thing, have his way, we can see the mess that the world is in, so to speak. But it's all by design. This is what's important for us to recognize because keep in mind, Yahweh has a purpose. Go ahead and read. 17. Yes. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Now, Yahweh's name is going to be declared throughout all the earth, and it's already happening. You see, because what's important to recognize is the time in which this is written. It's in the age in which we're currently living in. Okay, go ahead and read. Therefore saith, therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will, he hardeneth. That's right. See, so he does all these things. And I want to read just a few more scriptures because, or a few more verses, because I want to really get to the part where uh, he talks about the potter and the clay. I wrote a poem about the potter and the clay once before. Um, I wasn't thinking about this scripture. But instead, I'm just going to give this as a little natural example. Uh, it, it has to do with the idea of you trying to reshape and re, or remold or make somebody function the way you think they should function. Men and mm -hmm. women do it in marriages. You know, we try mm -hmm. to make somebody be according to what we want them to be. And I wrote this 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 poem talking about the potter and the clay. And at the end of the poem, it says something like, silly woman, don't get off of my potter and get, to, get on your own wheel. In <laughs> other words, work on, work on you. You know, don't be working on nobody else because we, we all, we all are, how can I say it, messed up. I wanted to use another word, but I can't do that. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So you just think about how we, each one is messed up within itself and trying to fix somebody else. That's how we do. That's the nature of the world. And, you know, the signs are all around us. There is this excellent movie. I love movies. And the movie is called Pihu. I may have mentioned this before. I don't know, but it made such an impression on me. And the movie is about a two-year-old little girl, it's supposed to be a true story. It's hard to believe that this is a true story, but it's supposed to be a true story. And it's about a little two-year-old uh, Indian family. And uh, she has a birthday party and her father leaves to go out of town that night. Well, the next morning, the little girl wakes up and her mother's dead and her father's out of town. It's, it, it's kind of dark, but it's so interesting. And this movie for two hours, all you're watching is this two little or this two year old try and fend for herself uh, with her mother being dead and her father out of town. And it's just like one kind of disaster after another, but she just always makes it out. In other words, she plugs up the urn and the urn falls down and there's burnings. And it's just, she gets locked into the refrigerator and she's, she's broken glass, but her feet just barely missed the glass. This is what you're sitting watching for an hour and a half. This, this movie is practically silent. And I was looking at this movie and it had a good ending. <laughs> it had a good ending. And I won't, I won't share that in case anybody wants to watch it, but it reminded me of the world. We're all like two-year-olds making a mess. <laughs> We're just making a mess. And it's like Yahweh showing, he, he took a, 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 just a remnant, plucked us up out of the world to show us what it's really all about. And we had no idea. And this is why I talk about how blessed we are to see and to appreciate and understand that we could be like everybody else, having no idea, still being that two-year-old with our jaws hanging down, just, just a mess. 
but he takes us, he plucks us out. And then that's the, that's only a fraction of the battle because keep in mind, he plucks us up out of the world, but we've had that conditioning for all of the years that we've been in the world. So then there's got to be this process where he's got to start cleaning us up, helping us to understand. And that operation is not without, it's within. Helping us to understand how it is that we have looked at things and how it's been all wrong. And when he starts to do that, man, then you truly start to become a peculiar person and you're walking around with these treasures in this earthen vessel. And you, you, that's what makes you a peculiar person and makes your language, your disposition totally uh, opposite or opposed to the world now. And that yet you still have to function in it. But he teaches us. He teaches us how to do that. He teaches us how to be like Paul said, to be a base. He teaches you how to, how to, what's the word, gallop in the game without running with the crowd, you know? He teaches you. And so then you start to learn and understand and appreciate what it is that you really have been given, especially as time goes on. Let's, let's uh, go off a little bit, but just little, go on back and uh, let's finish. Romans up. 9 and 19. Yes. Thou will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Yes. Nay, but old man, who art thou that repliest against Yahweh? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the pot potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Three. What if Yahweh, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he hath afore prepared unto glory. Pause. That's it. So now that should establish that this was preordained. That Yahweh has the play. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's, it's, a, play. it's a movie. The the beginning, end, middle, and end has already been written. Everything's already been determined. But because we're the characters in the play, we don't really know how it's going to end. We really don't know. And speaking now of those who have no knowledge, you have no idea that you're a part of a purpose. You have no idea that your destiny is not really your own. You have no idea that it was written from the very beginning. And we now have an idea. He took us, plucked us up, fucked us out. And I know we all have our um, story about how we came into this teaching. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, 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 and it's generally the case was you sure wasn't looking for it. You know, thank you. I acknowledge I've seen this, the sign. You wasn't looking for this. So the idea that you were taken out and I, I, I that's the only way I could describe this thing plucked out and, and taken up on a high mountain like Moses. And you too were shown a vision. Oh yeah, because see the vision and the, the, the vision that you are having in pieces is the same vision that Dr. Kinley got all at once. And Dr. Kinley talked about how we got the better end of the deal because we're able to walk through gradually while he teaches us slowly, you know, but that let us be very clear. There's something expected of us to whom much is given, much is required. What does that mean? Well, that means the gift that you've been given, those attributes, those are the mansions, those gifts that you've been given you're not expected to sit on them. Those are your talents. Those are your gifts. Now, how do you exercise them? How do you put 
you know, you could put Yahweh to the test. Is this thing real? If it's real, show me how it's real in me, in my earthen vessel, in my tabernacle. How it, does it work? How is it actually a, a reality in my life? How do I exercise the power within me? And you don't need to be looking at nobody else. Just pulling it together as a body, you know, and becoming interdependent. That means you're established in your own, but you're a part of a larger whole. And that's really important as we take this time that we have now to study, to commune with each other, and to perfect what it is that our Father has given us. I thank you again for the time. I appreciate it. Um, my heart is open uh, to love, and I just am so thankful that I was chosen to hear and to learn and to, to be in the body of Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Janine. I'd like to uh, ask for our second speaker, uh, Dr. Melissa Maloney from the Green Bay, Wisconsin class. Hello, class. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. I have two speakers. I just wanted to make sure. That was really beautiful. I love always talking about the purpose when it comes to Yahshua and just being salvation and really just the unity of everything. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to dive into the scripture just a little bit here. If for some reason the sound gets bad, let me know. Okay, I'm sitting outside because it's nice out. So um, I want to talk about the, the Godhead. Um, the, Melissa, the your sound, your sound. Believers. Melissa, your sound What's is, that? Uh, you're, you're, you're sounding kind of in and out. You're okay, normal. hold on a moment. I'm going to move, okay? Okay, I'm going to move. Hold on. Is that a little bit better? Oh, yes, much. Way better. <laughs> May better. Okay. All right. I'm outside, so I'm going to just move in. So I'm, I am uh, I have birds chirping around me and stuff. So, okay. So I'm going to work with the Godhead um, because all of it really fits together. Um, what the first speaker was talking about is, well, everything, really. Um, so let's go ahead and just go back to... The scripture reading, please. If we could drop down to um, 27. Let's do 27. Okay, Acts 17, 27. That they should seek Yahweh, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. You know, and this is a different concept than what a lot of the world believes. Um, a lot of the world believes that God is above the sun, moon, and stars. And they don't really understand that, you know, that he's not far from every one of us. And that's because he makes up everything. Okay, go ahead. 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As right. certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Right. So it says for in him, in him, meaning there's a purpose. Yahweh is the source, substance, and we have it on, a, on the chart. He's the source, the substance, the limits, the bounds of everything. So because he's everything, we live and we move and we have our beings right within him. He's not a guy that's above the sun, moon, and stars. He doesn't have that white beard like everybody thinks. <laughs> he, um, he really is the source and substance of everything. And then it also says, for we are also his offspring. Now, I know sometimes that throws people off. How are we his offspring? Well, it's because he is the creator of everything. He is the substance. And being an offspring, like if you have a child, mom and dad have a child, that baby is their offspring, okay? It's their substance that was just manifested in a different form, okay? It takes that mom's egg, dad's sperm, come together, and that's offspring, okay? It's part of mom and dad 
in that child. So we're his offspring because he's the substance of everything. So that's how we are his offspring. Okay, go ahead. 29, for as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Right. And a lot of people have so many theories, concepts, and opinions about the Godhead and what it really is. And we just had this conversation, or I just had this conversation recently with somebody about who God really is. And uh, so I just, I'm just going to work a little bit more with that. Let's go to John uh, 4, 23, please. John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. Right. And the only reason why we can worship him in spirit and truth is because he is spirit and truth. You know, he's not something else like he is spirit and he is truth. Yahweh is not a liar and he can't be a liar because the purpose just doesn't align with that. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So he is spirit and truth. Okay, go ahead. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Exactly. Yahweh is spirit. Now, if you look at the scriptures for anybody that maybe were to watch this on YouTube later on, the scripture does say Yahweh is a spirit. Um, the founder has corrected that because he's not a spirit. He's not an apparition. He's not um, a spirit floating around. He is spirit. That is what he is. We can't detect him with our senses. We can't see him. We can't touch him. We can't taste him. We can't smell him. He's indiscernible. He's inscrutable. Um, if you go to the, like at the Moses chart, you can see we have Yahweh depicted as a cloud. And the reason why Yahweh is depicted as a cloud is because he doesn't have a particular shape. He is, I will be what I will to be. So if he wants to be a cloud, he can be a cloud. If he wants to be a sofa, he's a sofa. <laughs> if he wants to be a house, he can be a house. If he wants to be a burning bush, he can be a burning bush. He is, I will be what I will to be. Okay. So he doesn't have a particular shape. He has manifestations of that. So that's why he's depicted as a cloud because a cloud has no particular description, shape or form. Like it's said in the moderation. Okay, so he depicts himself as a cloud. He is spirit. He is love. He is justice. He is beauty. He is power. He is strength. Okay, now we can see those manifested in the creation. You know, um, I remember going to Niagara Falls and seeing that water come down. That is powerful and beautiful. And that's just the manifestation of of Yahweh, of his beauty and his power. Or, you know, if you're, um, we have this place called Tidal Town in Green Bay where you used to be able to eat and the trains would come through and you could feel the power of the trains and the vibration. You know, those are all just demonstrations. Or when you look at, say your spouse, say you're a husband and you look at your wife and you think, oh, she's just so beautiful, right? She's just beautiful. You know, that, that beauty is manifesting in her. Well, those are, that's, that's a manifestation or an attribute of Yahweh. So now Yahweh doesn't have those things. He is those things. Okay. They're just demonstrated throughout the creation. Um, let's go to Jeremiah 23. And I believe it's 23, actually. Let me get down there. Okay. Thank you. The prophets. Jeremiah 23, 23. Uh, well, he, he's not far off. Or uh, no. Um, it, yes. Yeah. That one. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Jeremiah <laughs> 23 and 23. Am I an Elohim at hand? saith Yahweh and not an Elohim afar off. Is he not an Elohim afar off? Okay. Go ahead. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Now, this always cracks me up because some people think, oh, God will never know. 
<laughs> okay, God knows everything. Okay, mm-hmm. Yahweh knows everything because he is everything. You cannot hide from him. You can't go in a closet and pretend like God's never going to know. Okay. He is the substance of everything. Okay. So you can't hide yourself in secret places. You can't even hide things within your heart. You know, some people will be like, I never said it. So it doesn't matter. Well, Yahweh judges the intent of your heart. Okay. He knows your heart. He knows your thoughts. He knows everything about you because he made you. Okay. Go ahead. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith Yahweh? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith Yahweh? Right. Do I not fill heaven and earth? The reason he fills heaven and earth is because he made this whole purpose. He made the whole thing. Let's go to John 1 and 1, please. We're going to go back there. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Right. Okay, go ahead. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. Now, in the beginning was the word. Now, the word is Elohim. Okay, so what happened is Yahweh, uh, I like to think of it as Yahweh being thought, Elohim being the word, and Yahshua being the deed. Okay, meaning that Yahweh, he thought up of this whole purpose, this whole creation, everything that was going to happen. Okay. And then after he thought that up, he spoke it in that right there is the word. Okay. So he had that thought and then he spoke it in. Now that is the beginning of the purpose right there. Okay. Once the word came in, which is Yahweh Elohim, that purpose stands. Okay. So Back in the thought process, Yahweh thought of how this whole purpose was going to go. Everything down from the angelic creation all the way till the end of everything. He also foreordained or predestined souls to be saved. And that's why in Ephesians 2, when it talks about, and you have he quickened, meaning past tense, it's because he predetermined or preordained soul salvation unto people okay so that's why when we have yahweh in his thinking process and he spoke it on in that's yahweh elohim or yahshua right there okay now that was the word that's the beginning of the purpose so it says in the beginning was the word which was yahweh elohim and the word was with yahweh and the word was yahweh They weren't two separate beings. Yahweh Elohim was not in shape and form until Yahweh spoke it in or divested himself. Um, One way you can look at it is he came down as a sacrifice. Okay. He went from such a high state and slowed himself down into Yahweh Elohim. Okay. That is the word. And that's why it says the word was Yahweh. Okay. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Right. Now all things were made by him. We're talking about Yahweh Elohim at this point. Okay. They are the same thing, but a different manifestation. Okay. Remember, we can't see touch, hear, taste Yahweh because he's indiscernible. You can't understand him because he is spirit. He is just everything, okay? But he takes on shapes and shape and forms. So he took on Yahweh Elohim. And then Yahweh Elohim, that manifestation of him, made everything, made everything, okay? And nothing that exists was not made by him, okay? Go ahead. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm Mm-hmm. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Right. And the life really is Yahshua. And that's why when we talk about the word or son, Yahweh Elohim is the word. And the reason why it says word is because Yahweh declared the word. Okay. He declared. He spoke it in. That's why Yahweh Elohim is the word. He's also the son because he's also Yahshua at that point. Okay. Yahweh will be salvation because he took on shape and form right there or divested himself or slowed himself down. Okay. Drop down to 14. And the word was made flesh. And now this, 
Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Now, this same word that was Yahweh, this same word that was Yahweh Elohim, now was made flesh and dwelt among us. Let's go back to, um, I just want to get a couple things on the word. Uh, can we go to Exodus uh, 24, uh, 9? Mm -hmm. Exodus Thank 20, you. sure. Exodus 24, 24 and 9. Mm -hmm. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Now, Yahweh Elohim took on a shape and form here, and he was talking to people, and people saw him, and they're describing him here, how Yahweh Elohim had, you know, hands, feet, and a body, okay? And they knew it was a body of heaven in his clearness. Now, Yahweh Elohim made everything, but he also appeared to people in visions, just like at the burning bush, when Moses turned aside and saw that flaming fire bush. Uh, when the name was given, that was Yahweh Elohim. Any time a vision or revelation is being delivered, it is Yahweh Elohim, and this covenant would be through Yahshua, okay? So the word came on to Isaiah. The word came on to Jeremiah. The word came on to all these people in the law and prophets speaking on to them, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what the word is. He, he talks and communicates with mankind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go um, back to Yahshua now. So go to John one and one and then do 14. John one and one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. Right. So this word was Yahweh. Now drop down to 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now this is a misconcept of much of the world, a lot of people think that Yahshua was, or Jesus was um, Mary and John's little baby just picked by God. Okay. Or it was God's baby and Mary's egg. You know, I don't know. There's all different kinds of concepts, but what we re really need to realize is that Yahshua was the creator of the universe manifested in a body. So when we talk about John 1 and 14, that word, okay, the one that was spoken in, the one that Yahweh divested, slowed himself down to be, took on shape and form as Yahshua. So he came down even further. That would almost be like, I can't, I honestly can't even give a physical example other than us changing our clothes, you know, changing that manifestation. So um, me, I am a wife. Okay. I am a daughter and I am a teacher. Okay. That's my job. I teach life skills to disabled adults. So I have certain conversations with my husband Okay. That I would never even dare have with my mother. Okay. <laughs> like I put on different per se clothes. Okay. I'm a, I, I act differently. Okay. But I'm still Melissa all around. I'm still Melissa. Okay. So Yahweh is just really putting on different uh, clothes. If I can say it that way, or different manifestations for different purposes within his purpose. Okay. So let's go to John. 8 and 42. John 8 and 42. Yahshua said unto them, If Elohim or Yahweh were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from Yahweh. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Right. And this is beautiful because Yahweh or, or Yahshua or Jesus, we're going to call him Yahshua, isn't a separate person from the Godhead. He re it really is a unity, like the first speaker was saying. So here, Yahshua is walking around with people and they understand there's something different about him. 
I mean, they don't see it to the full extent that we do, obviously, because it wasn't revealed to them back then, but they understood that there was something different about him. And he said, if Yahweh your, were your father, okay, your father, Yahweh, you would love me because I came forth out of him. And then he says further on, neither came I of myself, but he that sent me. He's telling them, recognize I am not, I'm not of myself. I'm not of anything but the father. Okay. So, so that's just a cool witness right there. Excuse me. Let's go to John 12 and I think it's 44. Sorry, scripture readers. A lot of scriptures here. Yeah, 44. John 12 and 44. Yahshua cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. So again, Yahshua is reiterating him here. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me. Recognize, he's saying, recognize it's not me. Okay, mm -hmm. recognize I'm not talking about me, this Yahshua in a body, okay, but him that has sent me, meaning Yahshua the whole time was, you know, you know, I am the father, you know, <laughs> like he was trying to get them to understand that he was not just this physical man walking around that, you know, I'm the father. Okay, go ahead. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Right. So he's saying right here, full blank. If you've seen me, seen you father. see, yeah, you see the father, you see Yahweh. Okay. Because we are one, we're a unity. Okay. And of course they didn't really understand a lot of that back then because it wasn't revealed to them, but he is trying to explain to them that he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Um, let's go to John 14, 14, one, I think, uh, Philip, it talks about Philip, 14, um, a little farther down. oh, it is a little bit, you know what, let's start at one though, because it's really good, because it talks sure. about how, how Yahshua is, is really the mediator, okay, go ahead, okay, John 14 and one, thank you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. For if it were not so, I would have told you. Mm -hmm. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. You know, and I, where, go ahead. That where I am, there you may be also. This is a really funny thing when I read it, because a lot of people think he's going away. You know, um, they pull the scripture a lot. And some of the, the people that I talk to say, oh, he's preparing a place for us. But what it says here in three, it says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I, <laughs> I will come again and receive you unto myself. Okay. So he's saying that I, I, I am that way. Okay. I am that prepared place. Okay. I, I am. So where I am there, you may be also because I am the body or, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's just a crazy thing when we think about that. Okay. Go to six. John 14, six, Yahshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to unto the father, but by me. Mm -hmm. Now, Yahshua says, I am the way. Okay. Now in this purpose here, we had Yahweh, pure spirit. We established that no one could see, touch, taste anything of him. He took on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim declared in a purpose at that moment. It was declared. That was the word. Okay. Now to fulfill his purpose or to because his purpose is soul salvation, okay? It is Yahweh will be salvation. And in order to do that, he had to come in and save people. And that's where Yahshua comes in. Yahshua is that mediator. So when you look at, um, it's a cycle, okay? Everything starts up Yahweh, pure spirit, okay? It comes down to Yahweh Elohim 
comes down even further to Yahshua. Yahshua is going to go through his death, his burial, his resurrection. He's going to pour out his spirit, and then he's going to be gathering sons. And then when the sons are gathered and that body is put together, then he's going to take that bride. He's going to take his sons. He's going to take that body, and he's going to return back onto the father it's a round trip that's what the purpose is it's Yahweh will be salvation and there's all these moving parts to that so in here he says I am the way well why does he say that he says I am the way because there's no other way that we can get back onto the father but by him he is the truth Yahweh is the truth okay and Yahshua is the life right? And it says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Meaning, um, do you guys remember the story with Noah and the ark? If you were to look at that, that story talks about how there was a vision, okay? Noah had to build an ark, and he was told ahead of time that his sons and his son's wives were going to get into that ark. Now, remember, Noah didn't have any children when that vision happened. He didn't have any children, but he knew he was going to have some because Yahweh told him he was going to have some. And then when they got into that ark, they got in through a door. They didn't jump through a window. They didn't ride on the top of the ark. They went in through a door. There was a way unto life. Just like Yahshua, there's a way unto life, everlasting life. And Yahshua he is that way. He is the truth and he is the life. And the only way we are going to go back onto the father is by Yahshua. No way else because Yahshua is the door. He is the way. Okay. So keep going. Seven. Okay. Um, 14, John 14 and seven. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Right. If ye had known me, right? Big if there. So Yahshua is walking around and he's telling them, my father, this, my father, that, uh, this is the will. And he's talking to them in parables. They don't understand. They don't know what's going on. They just know there's something different about this guy. And he says, now, if you would have known me, look at me, he's saying, if you know me, you should know my father because mm -hmm. I am him. And if you've seen me, you've seen him. Okay, keep going. Eight, Philip saith unto him, Master, show us the father that it sufficeth us. So they're still not getting it. <laughs> so he's telling them all this stuff. And they're like, yeah, you're talking about the father. You're talking about him. You're talking about you, but I'm still not understanding. So Philip says, show us the father then it, you're talking about it. Show us the father and it'll, and it'll satisfy me. Okay, go ahead. Now, and Yahshua said unto him, have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the father. And how sayest thou then show us the father? Right. So Yahshua replies unto him and he says, have I, have I, he didn't say, oh, Yahweh up in the clouds, okay? He said, he asked to see the father and Yahshua said, have I, have I? He didn't say, oh, go look down the street or when you die, you're going to see him or anything like that. They said, where's the father? And he said, have I been so long time with you? I've been walking around with you and you still don't know me? That's what he's saying to them. He that has seen me, okay, you've seen, and he's not talking about the physical body here. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the attributes that he, that he's doing. Okay. And that he's manifesting. He that has seen me, you've seen me, you've seen the father. And how can you say, then show us the father, right? Okay. Keep going. He that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Believes, believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Mm -hmm. the, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, 
but the father that dwells in me, he does the works. Right. So believest thou not that I am not the father, that I am in the father and the father in me. And then he says, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. So again, he's not saying this, this is not me, the flesh talking. He's saying, he's saying that this is the father talking to you. He's trying to reiterate the point here. And then it says, but the father that dwelt in me, he does the works. He's saying that Yahweh was is right with him because they're the self same thing. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 11, believe me that I am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Right, right. So it really is a whole process here. And Yahshua came down, walked among us. Okay. And the whole time he was here, he was, and I, and I know sometimes people say, um, or even you can read in the scriptures what says, um, you know, the father, this, or the father, he prayed this and the father, but you have to look at the whole purpose. Okay. There's lots of things that maybe don't make sense until they're revealed unto you. And one thing that was revealed to us in this school and by Yahshua is that they really truly are a unity and there are line upon line upon line of demonstrations and things that we can bring up to prove that they really are a unity and they're not separate beings. This right here is just one example where he is clearly saying, I and the father we're the same thing. You've seen the father, you've seen me because we're the same thing. Let's go to uh, first Timothy three sixteen. Um, Pam, can you do me a favor? Um, I'm talking on my phone, like, and I can't see the screen that you're pointing oh, uh -huh. to. Can you just tell me when I have five minutes left? Like, tell me. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I will. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of righteousness. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Right. And without controversy, great is the mystery now, this whole thing isn't a mystery. Mm -hmm. There's, it, it, it's not revealed to everyone. And one thing, you know, sometimes people struggle with is why does this person not see this? Why does this person not understand? Or why do they believe it's the Trinity? Why, why do they believe in Jesus? Why can they not see that the name is Yahweh? It's because it's, because it's a mystery unto them. And, and Yahweh gives delusions. And he gives revelations. And if you can see it, then he gave you a revelation, which is hallelujah, really. So great is the mystery because it's a mystery. It's all locked in a mystery. And back then when Yahshua was walking around, it was a mystery unto them. They didn't understand. He would talk in parables and they'd be like, why do you keep talking to us in parables? <laughs> we don't understand, you know? And, and Yasha would be like, well, it's not, you know, it's not the time basically, you know? So now is the time that that mystery can be unlocked. And it's really through Yahshua in you that does that. And it says how Yahweh was manifested in the flesh and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness okay how yahweh was manifested in the flesh again this is just another witness that shows that yahweh took on shape and form as yahweh elohim and yahweh elohim further came down to yahshua okay good now let's get um let's get uh oh let's get some with the unity john john 10 and 3 melissa five minutes yes Thank you, John Tennant. You know what? I'm going to skip the unity. Let's go to Isaiah 55 because I really want to pull up a little bit with the purpose. Thank you. Appreciate that. Isaiah 55 and uh, let's do, I don't have time. So let's do 11. Let's start right at 11. Uh, 10, 10. Isaiah 55 and 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not thither, 
but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Right. So now this is really the purpose right here. So just like that rain cycle, how it comes down, it waters the earth and then evaporates back up. Okay. But what mm -hmm. happens when it rains physically? So is it waters the flowers, it waters, you know, it grows food for us. It helps us live it. it, it that's what it does. That's what the rain cycle does. Now it's saying in 11, so shall my word. Remember, we established what that word was. It's Yahweh Elohim. So shall my word be it that goeth forth out of my mouth, right? Yahweh Elohim spoke in the creation, declared Yahshua right there. Yahweh will be salvation, okay? It went forth out of his mouth and that purpose stood right there. And then it says, it shall not return unto me void. Why will it not return unto him void? Because Yahweh is not a liar. He's not a man that he can lie, okay? So once he went through that thinking process, that thought process, he spoke in that word, that's it. It's done. He cannot change it. He's not an ever-changing L. Once that purpose was established and those souls were deemed to be saved back there. And it talks about how, um, you know, we were predestined. Our, our destiny, whether we were going to be going to the lake or we were going to be saved in Yahshua, it was predestined from before anything came about. So when mm -hmm. Yahweh was back in his thinking process, he thought of you. <laughs> He thought of you and he thought this is going to be, this is going to be one of my chosen souls. He thought of you. And then when it came to pass, so shall my word when Yahweh Elohim came forth, it can't return unto him void. And that's why he had to divest himself even further into Yahshua. Yahshua had to come in, die, go through that death, burial, resurrection, and then outpouring of the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit that enters in you, that Pentecost that happens in you, is what will make the whole purpose be accomplished, okay? And it will prosper because that's what Yahshua's job is. Yahshua's job, job is to be soul salvation. He is that door, just like that ark had that door, and they had to go through that door to have that way and that life. That's what Yahshua is. He's that mediator. He's the one that's going to take us from where we are now. He's going to gather us together and he's going to bring us back onto the father. Okay. Just like that rain cycle, that rain comes down. It has a purpose when it comes down, but then that water goes right back up. Okay. Just like us, Yahweh Elohim, he came down. He has a purpose for coming down. He collect those souls. Okay. That's, that's us. And he's going to take us back onto the father because he's the way he's the truth and he's the life. So that's just kind of a little bit with the Godhead. God, the Godhead really is just an all encompassing thing. Um, I appreciate the time. I hope somebody got something out of that. Um, all praise and glory unto Yahshua, because you know what? He, he is the teacher and he's the student and really he's everything. So um, I hope you guys have a great day and thank you so much. Peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Melissa. Our next speaker will be uh, Dr. Gary Myers from Gates, New York class. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Very good. Um, certainly enjoyed class so much so far from the prayer through the music. That was a upbeat song, wasn't it? I really like that. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, the things that the previous speakers have gotten into, um, I just so much appreciate Yahweh giving me an opportunity to join you guys today. And um, certainly a privilege and a pr pleasure to have anything to say about Yahweh. <clears throat> Um, to pick up a few things that were mentioned, can we go back to John 14? 
first. And um, she uh, brought up how Philip asked him to show him the father. If you have it. Um, I don't, sorry, I'm paging. John 14 and seven. If, yeah, or six. Joshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Rabbi, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Joshua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Okay, so um, if you go to Romans 1, 19 and 20, why don't you, why don't you read 1, 19 and 20? Um, okay. In case I, I say it wrong. Sure. sure. Romans 1 and 19. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. So how can you clearly see something that's invisible? I mean, we bring that up quite often. And it's because, and, and that's why the world struggles. That's why atheists struggle so much. Um, I, I happened to get on a, a Facebook group, which is called Atheists versus um, God Believers. That's what it's called. Uh. And so um, when you try to go at it a little bit with these atheists, they just cannot grasp the, the, the reality that it's physical things that show forth these spiritual things that can't be seen. They, they want proof that they can touch, feel, taste, you know, be able to um, <clears throat> somehow, that it has to be tangible in some way with their five senses. And you know, Yahweh never set it up that way to be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, he always set it up that what I made is the witnesses that I exist. And boy, was that a revelation when we came into class, wasn't it? When mm -hmm. we realized that, yeah, first of all, God did not create the creation out of nothing, but that it was actually materialized from spirit. And, um, you know, so many things that were mentioned today goes through my head, like um, it was a thought process. And if you can say Yahweh yeah, had thoughts, because, you know, it's, it says in there, um, his thoughts are not our thoughts, but he doesn't have a mind like we do either. So um, what was in him had to manifest first super incorporeal and then corporeal. It just had to manifest that way. But that manifestation, those manifestations represent how he exists in spirit. And it makes us know, it causes us to know that he exists, that he is real. And when you um, read that, the, the scripture where it says, in him we live and move and have our being, and, and Dr. Kinley has said to um, individuals um, to always, how does it go? Always be aware of his presence. You know, very similar to that. Always be aware of his presence because he is. He's, he's present everywhere because whether it's the air or the chair you're sitting on, it is spirit materialized. It's him. Mm -hmm. um, so what was Philip looking at? Okay, so he was looking at the flesh. He was looking at what I would call face value, the face value of Yahshua, and not seeing the principles that were within, the attributes that were mentioned. 
that we're in. And I liken that to what's called depth perception. Can uh, someone bring up the definition of perception, please? <clears throat> because it's, a, it's kind of a physical example of being able to see something spiritually. Because what we're, what we're doing is we're using the eye of understanding. It's, a, it's understanding mm -hmm. Yahweh and his principles his doctrine, um, and that is what we're really seeing. It's mm -hmm. not a physical thing. Go ahead. So <laughs> I've got it in uh, dictionary.com. Perception, the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through the senses. The state of being or process of becoming aware of something through the senses discernment, uh, a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something, a mental impression. Did you catch that? It? He said, she said, discerning, discerning, understanding. What's, um, is it our seventh hmm. aim to discern, avoid being deceived? See? So discerning is important. It's not something Eve could do in the garden. She could not discern who, um, I mean, it goes both ways, right? With both mysteries. She could mm -hmm. not discern the devil, could not discern Satan. Mm -hmm. She was not able to understand his deception. Uh, that is a pretty big uh, thing that's going on right now. Uh, geez, as far as thinking that the earth is flat, we have earth flat, you know, flat earthers out there, they call them. Earth. What, are you, what are you discerning? Okay. <laughs> and, you know, this goes right along with thinking that uh, you were getting inoculated with uh, GPS, with the <laughs> vaccinations. And, you know, it's crazy stuff out there. Kind of, um, mm -hmm. uh, what are they called? Help me out. Um, um, conspiracy. There you go. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't grab that word. When you get older, it gets harder. <laughs> but um, so perception. Um, yes, being able to see using your physical eyes, but it also talks about discernment. It also talks about understanding. Right. Uh -huh. Now get the definition of depth, please. Of depth. Depth, D E P T H. Okay. So this depth perception is something that the atomatists use to help us to help to know um, how well their patients are seeing. Okay. So um, the distance from the top or surface to the bottom, the distance from the nearest to the farthest point of something, or from the front to the back. Um, the, uh, the apparent existence of three dimensions in a picture, photograph, or other two-dimensional representation perspective. Okay, did you say three dimension? Yeah, the apparent existence of three dimensions in a picture, photograph, or other two-dimensional representation perspective. Right, so the three dimension is what we're getting at. Yeah. Um, does that sound familiar? I mean, think everything comes in threes, right? This is according to a pattern, because if you look at an object that has the depth of it, meaning the height, the length, and the width, and that's considered the, what the pattern of that object is, understanding it according to its pattern. With two dimension, you really don't get the depth of it. Um, has anybody injured an eye where you had to go around with one eye or seen anybody go around with one eye? Mm -hmm. um, my father lost his eye and he, you know, at the beginning he would miss his glass when he poured his milk. Okay. And, you know, when you walk along, you might miss a step or miss that stone and, you know, and trip. It doesn't, you don't have that depth perception like you would if you, you know, with both your eyes. And, you know, I think a lot of us have 
heard this and taught this, that those two eyes were as the two witnesses. You know, just like the law and the prophets are the two witnesses. We don't want to go by just the law. We don't want to go by just the prophets. We have, if we're going to go to the prophets, you know, you can assume it's in the law, but it's always good to make sure that it's in the law as well. By two or three witnesses, a matter will be established. So you're establishing that something is so high, so thick, so, has so much width. And so Yahshua is trying to establish with Philip who he is. And he said, no one can go to the Father but through me. Now, that's some kind of power and authority, isn't it, to mm -hmm. have that. So when you talk about uh, um, the, the threefold nature, when you talk about the Godhead or the supernal nature, that authority has to come down through from the cloud and the superincorporeal and the corporeal which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Now, can you get the green chart up and um, zoom? I always like to use this word, zoom in. <laughs> uh, um, do, do we have the cell on the green chart? Yes. Can you see it okay? So, so um, the, the speaker was talking about thought, word, and deed, which I, I love using thought, word, and deed to explain the Godhead to someone new. And um, in a similar way, but for some reason, the cell came to my mind that, and, and they also talked about the roles that we play. So every state of existence that Yahweh is in is a different role that he plays. So when you look at a cell, the DNA plays a role, the RNA plays a role, and what I call the cell body. Um, I, I know that's a simple way of saying it, and I'm just going to try to stay simple. That the, the RNA is told or learns from the DNA what its pattern is or what its thoughts is, if you want, will, or what its purpose is. So the RNA takes it from the DNA and passes it along, communicates it as the word to the cell body, the, um, the deed, the one that carries it out. So it's a very simple way of seeing that uh, um, thought word and deed and how it works. So every cell in our body is showing forth that. That just is amazing how Yahweh works. <clears throat> now I want to get into... Um, let me see now. I think there was might have been another example there, but no, that's good. So I, you know, I, I hope that makes some sense with the depth perception. And let's get, I forgot to get this. Let's get um, Psalms 92 and 5 to bring up a few of them. But no, knowing how Yahweh exists is that threefold nature is having some depth perception. It's having some understanding. It's being able to use the cell and use thought, word, and deed as physical things so that uh, invisible things can be seen and understood. Psalms 92 and 5. 92, yeah. That's what you said, 92 and 5? Yes, thanks. Oh, Yahweh, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. And our, his thoughts are very deep. Now get Daniel 2.22. So I'm trying to show how these, these are mysteries, and they are things that are deep. They are not for just... Any Joe Small, they you have to have a revelation. You have to be called by Yahweh to hear these things and understand them. You, sure, can't, can't, study up, you can't study up on it, folks. <laughs> you can't, you know, you got people that are uh, trying to be ministers or the bishops even or the, the cardinals. They all had tons of tons of schooling. And they don't know the mysteries. They don't know them. They don't. 
it's funny because when I first came into class, I um, sat there and Dr. 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 So-and-so gets up and Dr. So-and-so gets up and I'm thinking, gosh, these guys all got doctor's degrees. <laughs> Holy cow. They, they really know their stuff. But um, little did I know, talking about the Holy Spirit being the teacher, he's the true <laughs> doctor. And, uh, but that's the way, you know, it's the way I thought when I came in. Uh, Daniel 2 and 22, he reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. So he reveals it. Didn't we say that yeah, yeah, only Yahshua can uh, reveal the Father to you? Because the Father, this is a secret, is a mystery. Okay. But he will reveal himself to those as it was mentioned pre predestined to hear it go to first just one more maybe first corinthians 2 and 10 please <clears throat> first corinthians 2 and 10 <clears throat> but yahweh hath revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Yahweh. So Yahweh is revealed. Um, things are revealed to us by his spirit. And its spirit searcheth all things, even the deep things of Yahweh. Okay, so it takes spiritual depth perception for this. And only he can give us the eyes and hear, ears to hear and see, right? We, we know what's in there. We've read it many times um let's get uh a scripture reading um and start where do i want to start i want to start where paul comes on the scene i believe um 15 no um Yeah, uh, Acts 17 and 15. Uh, yeah, you have to start at 16, I guess. Okay. Acts 17 and 16. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore, disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Okay, let's, let's back up a little bit. Now, it said the spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Now, don't you think the spirit and the Jews should have been stirred up a little bit, seeing that the city was given to the idolatry? <laughs> Where were the Jews? What, what, what were they doing at that time? Um, did they uh, fall into that as well? Well, we know that the Jews always did, and if they don't have the Holy Spirit within them, they could very well have gotten into um, those kind of things as well. But we know that a lot of this idolatry is from the um, the Greeks, right? We 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 you know as we read into this, we'll find and we'll see that. Um, so in seventeen, did you read read seventeen? I did, but I can read again. Seventeen. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. So he disputed these things with the Jews. Hey, what are you doing? Don't, did you read the commandments? Isn't it the first one? Um, or maybe the second one. Don't, don't hear false images. All right. That's another one too. I'm sorry. I always digress. But I, uh, when I was a Catholic before I came to class, I um, visited in uh, Pennsylvania and um, the, the Amish in Pennsylvania, and they didn't want their pictures taken. And the reason they don't want their pictures taken is they, they, they incorporate that somehow with that second commandment, not to have false images. So they don't want pictures of them on the walls or anything like that. And when I, I came home, I go, I never was taught that commandment. As a Catholic, I was never taught it because they have their own idolatry. They have their own images. They have their own statues. And when I looked into it, I found out, I think it was actually when I came to class, someone pointed out, yeah, you know, they took that out 
and they divided one of the commandments, they divided it up into two, so you still had 10 commandments. But um, I thought that was just amazing when I seen that. But um, so here are the Jews, they're not paying attention to that second uh, commandment, and he's getting on them, not that we're following the Ten Commandments. You don't do that at all. You just don't do it. If you, if you understand Yahweh at all, you don't, you don't try to make an image of him. Has anybody tried? Oh, uh, I want to, I want to pray to G Yahshua. Um, and you try to think of an image of him and it's just nothing happens. For me, at least, I can't make an image of Yahshua. I just can't. It just doesn't happen. Um, you know, they have images of Jesus all over the place and they make him, uh, you know, like we say, blue eyed and blonde. And that's funny, just yesterday I was thinking they, you know, Catholics, they um, worship Mary as well. And I'm thinking, well, back then we know that they had dark skin and I, I'm, I'm trying to envision them having a dark skin Mary, <laughs> you know, just as much as a dark skin Jesus, because that's not what you see. It's not what you see. They just, you know, whatever their imagination is and whatever they want them to be, um, that's what they have them as. But, anyways, so he's disputing them mm -hmm. every day. I mean, you're talking the Jews, you're talking, and I'm sure they were pretty significant Jews there as well, devout persons. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then the philosophers, read 18 now. Acts 17, 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seems to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached to them Yahshua and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Arapagus, saying, may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? Okay, so we back up a little bit. So anybody call you a black babbler when you tried speaking this uh, gospel mm -hmm. to anybody? <laughs> Probably something like that or maybe even worse, right? But mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what it is to their ears because they don't have the right ears, okay? They don't have the right eyes. And then they took him and brought him to Arapagus. It's like they forced him, you know? And so he got pushed around a little bit right there and then wasn't looked at very kindly. And I guess I'm, I'm kind of, that kind of hits me a little bit because, you know, before class, we talked a little bit about how headquarters is getting on us about the service marks and whatnot and trying to push us around. And, um, and I'm thinking about, well, who is the authority here? I mean, Paul, when that spirit was stirred up in him, you know where that authority came from, where then he had authority. He goes out and he speaks with authority. He disputes with them, see? And it's mm -hmm. only this authority from Yahshua that we can do that and we will do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of us had to get up in a class or even maybe a, a, a convention where you know everybody's looking at you and those that are looking at you don't agree with you when they you know when you've got this new doctrine that came in and, and I guess if we read a little bit more it talks about all they wanted to hear was something new mm -hmm. and that's what happened in the school is something new came along and they just jumped on it. There's a lot more to it than that, but um, then that's when the, how does he word it? Um, he says he disputed. That's where a lot of the, the disputes came in. So it took a spirit to stir up in a person to get up in front of these individuals who a lot of them had high places in this class and to be able to hold their ground and to be able to <clears throat> look them in the face and to know by what 
power and authority they are speaking by, right? So to try to, I know I don't have a lot of time. Did you give me five minutes? Yes, actually, yeah. Okay, so I know so there's four more, four more minutes. Okay. Um, so when we look at how we have that authority, without getting into too much, but just maybe look at it on your own, how this authority comes from pure spirit through Yahweh Elohim. And then when he became flesh as Yahshua, because they asked him, by what authority are you doing this? And then he goes, and, and then he, he talks another spot. Hey, it's by the works that I'm doing that shows that it's the father who sent me. And so if you see the works, if you in the works is what we speak, if it's according to the law and the prophets, it, if it is line upon line, precept upon precept, if it is, and we can, we can say it now, if it is what Dr. Kinley handed down, then we know by what authority we are speaking by. And it's not by the authority of the IDMR. That is not the name that we need to speak the truth. Um, so I just wanted to try to sum all that up, put all that together the best I could, <laughs> um, the time I had. And uh, I hope uh, you got something out of that. I really appreciate your attention and the time and all praises unto Yahshua the Messiah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't unmute me. All right. It's good afternoon now. Uh, hope we was all edified from what was said uh, this morning. Like you. If you have anything to say to the uh, speakers, any questions or anything, any of the speakers, please stay on after the doxology and it will be addressed. We hold Zoom classes on Wednesday and Sunday. Wednesday from 7 to 9 and Sunday from 11 to 1. May we all stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign. Long glory and majesty, dominion and power, hope for all time, now and ever. Let us all see. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.